And so hello, welcome again uh, to our turbulence modeling series. Today we can talk more about filtering after we go through some of the confusing terms. We went through some of the confusing terms, which specifically there are these uh, stress terms over here. Because this this in a vector, or rather this Einstein tensor notation may be unfamiliar to some, so therefore need to spend some time explaining what these are. So that we can, you know, continue uh, doing what we need to do. Okay, and these are of course our convective terms that uh, you can bring this uj out. But otherwise, we don't usually uh, mess around with that. Okay, so um, now we will need to start filtering all these uh, equations over here. Okay, so remember, remember our 1D filter was as such. This is our filtered velocity. And this is our filter function. And this is also known as a convolution kernel. It's a very complicated word, but it's just a, basically our filter function to give it a weighted average kind of a thing. And if we generalize, uh, this is our 1D filter. If we generalize to three coordinates, they would look something like that. Okay. So, so this, this C here is some distance from this uh, X filter. Some at uh, some uh, some uh, vector coordinate here that's basically the idea or you know xyz that kind of idea so this d3 d3 psi is just basically doing this filtering over three dimensions nothing more than that so this is shorthand of course uh, in a generic filter we can also include a time function Especially for Reynolds average Navier-Stokes, we can also do a time filtering or time averaging. That's why you have a time function there. So if we were to include that, it would look something like this. This filtered velocity in terms of position and time. Okay, first you filter it. I mean, you can first filter it by this uh, position. So it's d3 psi. Okay, so this x minus psi. Then this is a... Uh, u of psi and t prime okay so this this is actually uh, you know doing doing the filtering not just over uh, the position but over varying varying times as well so you need to average the times that's why you get this uh, time filtering effect using t prime and c over here so this is the three dimension filtering over space and t prime here is doing the time filtering. So we extend what we do with space over three dimensions over to one more dimension of time. So this is actually four dimensions here. Now, I said before, uh, g is our filter function with some sort of uh, weighted average. The more formal term is called convolution kernel. You can look at integ integral transforms uh, to get more details about this, but I'm not going to go into details for this video okay so what are some properties of filters right okay we, uh, the reason we need to know these properties of filters is because we're gonna start filtering this whole equation so this is important because we're going going to start filtering the Navier-Stokes equations again again so we're going to do it twice right we're going to filter twice so a lot of nasty terms are going to pop out here and there so we need to at least uh, equip yourselves with some basic properties of you know filtering so filtering um filtering okay first thing first what are some properties one is the conversation of conservation of constants you can take constants outside the integral so let's say you want to filter uh, a a times u of x, where a is a constant. All right. So let's say you were to filter this whole thing. So you want to filter this whole thing. So we have a bar of a times u of x. Okay. And then what will you do? You would actually filter like so. You would replace this by a u, or rather a times u. Okay, 
And knowing that this is an integral, you can just bring the constant out. So usually, whatever properties you can apply to integrals, you can apply to filters as well. So you can just bring the A out. And then this whole thing here is actually the filtered velocity. So A U bar. Oopsie. U bar will result. Okay, A U bar will result here. That's why we, uh, from this, we can say uh, A U of X equals a u bar of x so this is provided of course a is a constant so that you can just bring the whole thing out now linearity is also an important uh, property of filters why because uh, let's say you want to filter this and to filter this you need to bring both of these terms into this equation here phi plus psi for example and then of course you can, because it's an integral, you can actually separate it into uh, two separate integrals. Okay, so this is how the filters actually work. They actually, okay, bring the, the properties actually are derived. So you can separate uh, this integral here into two integrals here, right? One for phi, one for psi. So phi and psi are just random, random functions. You uh, could be u, could be any other kind of uh, velocity or vector or whatever you want to filter. All right. So when you bring these two inside, you can actually separate these two out because it's a property of uh, integrals. Then the first one you will notice is actually phi bar. The second term is actually psi bar. So this term is phi bar phi bar equals to this and likewise psi bar equals to this term here and therefore you can prove this okay and the last one is this term this called commutation with derivation Okay, so let's try to filter this. Okay, so this uh, you filter like so. You will apply your generic filter again. Oopsie, it should, the bar shouldn't go all the way in. So you have this. Uh, you have this term in here. Okay, the phi ds inside. Okay. But you see, this s has nothing to do with this psi or this t prime because they are different variables altogether. So this is one of those cases where you can actually bring the derivative outside. Okay, So you can bring the derivatives outside because s here, which is some space coordinate, has nothing to do with this c, which is, you know, like, uh, okay, C is actually, let's say X is some uh, some coordinate relative to 0 or S or S, right? So this is some space coordinate. But C is a different vector altogether. C is the vector from this reference point X. Is the, is the vector is the vector from this point X depending on what other position you're considering. And likewise, same idea for this time as well. So definitely, it, uh, you can bring this, this guy out, and that's why you will have phi bar outside here. And that's how we prove this third property. So if you forget these properties, just remember, try to put it inside the integral and see whether you can simplify it in whatever way. So now, we have to filter our Navier-Stokes equations. So we have an equation like so. First thing you need to do, okay, because of course you, 
you do your filtering and all that's why we went went through all the trouble of figuring out what these were so that we know what to do when we filter them uh, okay first thing we do is to ignore gravity because that's anyway what most people do so we can just follow suit ignore gravity because it's not that important and we filter our above properties noting of course it's incompressible so if we were to apply a filter across all these equations right okay so we go through step by step okay i'm going to put the left hand side under a filter and of course the right hand side ignoring gravity under a filter okay now remember our we apply the second second uh, rule the linearity rule to say that uh, okay i can actually uh, separate this out into the many terms here so this one uh, i can do it like so this one i can do it like so here okay okay i need to do a bar here this one I will bring it to the outside as well and then I will do a bar on top as well okay now that we have done this we can move on to the next step and then we say that hey we can actually bring these derivatives outside therefore we can get from this to here because this time derivative has nothing to do with this t prime filter because it, it applies a, in a very similar way to to which uh, the space coordinates are being used or being done so this ds can be a function of space and time whatever but uh, it has nothing to do with this t prime okay so we can bring that derivative of time outside because this integral has nothing to do with this specific t it has to do with this t prime where t prime is again if let's say you are talking about t being here t prime okay is this little bit of distance here all right it is this uh time deviation from this uh this t so um we don't need to really consider that we can just bring the derivative outside and then we just do the same for this one as well over here likewise for the pressure term over here we can just bring the derivative outside and of course we apply the constant rule provided of course that uh, this rho is relatively constant so for incompressible flow it is we just neglect buoyancy first for simplicity okay neglecting buoyancy for simplicity and likewise we can apply the we can apply the uh, constant uh, rule here provided the viscosity is constant uh, which is a material property of the, the fluid property this is not the turbulent viscosity so that's constant we can leave it outside derivatives we can also leave it outside second derivatives we can also leave it outside and if we were to apply the same filtering to our continuity equation then we will just see that the filtered velocity is equal to zero okay so okay overall after the after that we after after our filtering we still find that this these two terms look similar to the navier stokes equation maybe later we can get rid of it but the most important part is knowing what this term is this term over here the convection term here uh, that's the special bit which requires a lot more attention okay so that's what we'll start to decompose uh, start to do with our first round of filtering so remember this is our first filtering so it is uh, to separate use this filter to separate the large medium from the small after that we'll still need to do a second time okay so how do we do the filtering of this okay before I go on to the other steps how do we do filtering of 
of this. So there, there seems to be so-called no, no uh, magic rule for us. To do this, we'll need to kind of expand all the terms out, which is kind of a little bit of a headache, but we'll do it anyhow. Okay, so we'll do it anyhow. So uh, we'll need to expand ui and uj okay then we we go and start you know applying our rules and doing the filtering so ui is uh, as such ui equals to the filtered part and the non-filtered part uj is basically the same Okay, uj is basically the same and it's basically saying that the total velocity is equal to the filtered part and the non-filtered part okay so if we were to substitute this into here we would get the following so ui equals to ui the filtered part, part plus the non-filtered part uj the filtered part plus the non-filtered part now the thing we need to do is to expand this out because this we cannot we cannot simplify until we expand it so we need to do a bar of this first thing first is this ui uj the filtered parts so that's the first term so one two okay uj into ui or ui into uj that's the first part plus ui into uj prime plus ui into uj bar plus ui prime uj prime Now, what do we notice about this? This is actually a summation, so we can apply our linearity rule here. So we'll just do the following. Bar of ui uj plus bar of this term here plus bar of this term here plus bar of this last term here and actually there are special names for each of these terms so uh, these are the special names that we kind of want to give to them okay so let, let's uh, recall remember we actually grouped all the terms with this unfiltered velocity into one term so the term is called tau ij okay this is uh, actually equals to tau ij and this is uh, okay we give special name names to each term so tau ij is all, all of this this is known as the subgrid tensor subgrid tensor okay because all of these uh, all of these uh, have subgrid uh, velocities in them okay so this on a whole is called a subgrid tensor now remember in the Reynolds average Navier Stokes equation this this uh, ui bar was actually constant that's why we could bring it out uh, because we actually average ui bar over all all time scales that's why we have a constant average velocity because the average velocity over the whole time scale uh, is constant so this is a constant that's why we can bring it out however in this case uh, we note that this uh, filtered velocity is not constant anymore that's why we cannot just simplify we cannot just simplify it the way we did in our Reynolds average Navier Stokes so this is slightly different okay and likewise uj prime is no longer uh, uj bar is no longer constant in this context in the Reynolds average Navier Stokes context, it is because the time filter is across all time domain. Therefore, this 
quantity here is constant. Okay, so anyway, this whole collection of three terms is called the subgrid tensor. Subgrid tensor is known as tau ij. So the reason why it's called subgrid tensor is because it has this subgrid uh, velocities over here. Subgrid velocity is basically the unfiltered part. Okay, subgrid velocity equals the unfiltered part of the velocity. Okay, so just take note of this. So anytime you see subgrid, uh, unfiltered should kind of cross your mind. Okay. So of course, uh, you can actually further reduce this into, uh, into uh, further you know special names. So you'll notice something about this. This is actually the U i prime U j prime. This is actually called the Raynaud's subgrid tensor. Okay. Raynaud's sub subgrid tensor. Why is it called a Raynaud's subgrid tensor? Because both of them are talking about the unfiltered or subgrid velocities. So uh, very similar to Raynaud's stresses, we have the ui prime uj prime. We also have it for the unfiltered parts. So this is something you're kind of familiar with already. We call these the Raynaud's stresses in the Raynaud's, in context of the Raynaud's average Navier-Stokes equations. But over here, we call it the Raynaud's subgrid tensor. Okay, that also has this, uh, these uh, components of uh, fluctuating velocities, right? So remember how to construct tensors? Uh, this, this will be the element in, remember, rho i, column j. Okay, so if you're not sure, you can go and see the last videos. And the other term is called the cross tensor, cross stress tensor. Okay, because the, this, these are the other two terms, right? These are the two terms, and we call them Cij, Cij, the cross stress tensor. Okay, so the cross stress tensor, why is it called a cross stress tensor? It is because you have one part that is to do with the filtered velocity, and the other part has to do with the unfiltered velocity or the subgrid velocity. Same, same for this, you have uj bar, which is the filtered velocity in the j direction on the j index. ui prime, which is the unfiltered velocity in the i index. So we have uh, a term that depends on both the filtered and unfiltered, or the filtered and the subgrid uh, velocities. So that's why you have a cross, they call it a cross tensor, because it goes across the two scales, so to speak. So these, these are the components of this subgrid tensor, or subgrid stress tensor, right? Or subgrid tensor, okay? And this, this basically, uh, you kind of model it in your uh, Smalkorinsky model, okay? So recall, we model the subgrid tensor in Smart Gorinsky model S. Okay. Well, if you look at CFD online, it'd be something like this. Okay. Okay, so you, you'll have this, this subgrid stress tensor and you'll have this other term here. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll basically try to explain the physical concept behind that. But, uh, yeah. You have these two that are being modeled as some uh, some uh, uh, velocity, um, some strain rate times some uh, uh, subgrid uh, turbulent viscosity. So that's the idea. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy down from here. CFD online wiki, tau ij minus one third tau kk. And this is uh, the both of these together. They are known as uh, the Viatroid part, but I'm not going to explain that just yet. I'm just going to copy and paste it first. Two 
Okay, so this this whole thing in the center here, that is uh, this is the uh, viscosity part. So it's a mu. Okay, row, new subgrid. So this is a subgrid uh, viscosity, the kinematic part. Okay, and to S I J. Remember, this is the the rate of strain tensor we were talking about in previous videos. So new SGS equals to okay C Smagorinsky times the filter width so this is the characteristic length scale squared times the mean rate of strain tensor S bar okay where S bar equals to square root 2 sij sij so this is the mean rate of strain okay and this is of course a scalar not a not a vector not a vector or tensor anymore okay so okay this is what we did for smogorinsky model and then of course i'll be explaining this part in the next video and of course we'll we'll be doing the second round of filtering which we will need to do okay so uh, now that you understand the, what the first round of filtering does roughly, and of course I'll need to explain this bit in the next video, you'll need to do it a second time. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again. Bye-bye.